Hey, 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 this is the Comp Guy coming at you. So today, I'm going to be discussing something very, very controversial in the MyVegas community. And that is, should I buy chips? What, what, what are the common uh, arguments? One is, buying chips helps, helps me get loyalty points faster. Helps me level up through the VIP. And oftentimes, you get better rewards. Which, there is truth to that. Um, the other argument for not buying chips is, like, you want to try to maximize your vacation as best as possible. So, why would you uh, pay to get chips? Why wouldn't you dedicate that money to playing in Vegas or offsetting other costs? Um, I kind of have a two-pronged two answer to this. And I will, um, I will kind of unravel it in this video. And this is my best solution. And, and I, I think this will be one of the more controversial ones because it's my approach at it. Um, let me see. I want to double check. Um, make sure that, okay, everything on here is loaded. So when I go to click buy, you'll see on my Vegas mobile, you'll see packages from $2 and you get 80 of your VIPs and 15 million all the way up to a hundred dollar packages, which, um, you come with, which are a hundred dollars to come with 1.7 billion, which basically would double what I already have. And you get 4000 Also, with the VIP bonus, you get 30% more. Um, so let's go to the VIP. So that's really not a bad deal, $27 million. Um, I go into the VIP. So I want to see what my status is and what these provide. Um, so how to earn. You basically just got to go in, collect your daily bonuses, collect your hourly bonuses, Purchase bundles from Store and Connect. Um, all the apps, basically, with your Facebook account. Um, every time I exit out, it's really annoying. And then, what are the benefits? So, your basic level is, basically, you get 5% back. Mm -hmm. Your VIP is only a day. I mean, it's almost impossible not to, like, if you play regularly, and even just collect, not get to Opal or Emerald. Um, what are your benefits? They're basically all the same. Um, until you get to Opal, you you have access to a high roller room. I don't know how much that matters. And then you get multipliers and chip package bonuses. Um, as you go, you start getting priority support as you get to Sapphire. And when you get to Ruby and Tanzanite, you um, get higher bonuses, obviously, for chip packages. And then you also get... Um, you get it when you get to Tanzanite, you get a personal host, which in all actuality it's 33,000. Let's see how much it would cost. I'm already uh, how much do I have right now? I have I would have to get basically 32,000. Let's see, I would have to get I'd have to spend about $800. But I also get 20 times the multiplier. And I, if I spent around $800, I'd also um, get, as I go through, as I level up. So is $800 worth getting to Tanzanite? Um, it wouldn't have to be a one-time purchase. Um, let's go to here. Uh, so what you can do... This is another way you can maximize it. Um, right now, I have a Chase Freedom credit card. Just a regular Freedom. No unlimited. No Chase. It's, it's the basic entry level. That It has a 5% rotating category, all right? And right now, it's Amazon. So, say I wanted to buy an iTunes gift card through Amazon. Um... I can get up to a $200 gift card, and I get basically 6% back on that. So, 
and it's and it's cash back. So basically, I would be getting X amount of money back from whatever I spend. Um, so say I spend a thousand dollars, I get what? A thousand dollars is what six, six dollars, sixty dollars. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to do mental math. Um, math's not my strong suit. So it, is it worth getting the six percent back on your credit card? Um, I feel like it would be if you play enough and you kind of divvy out the credits uh, on every app that you want to play on. Because if you get up to that level, you're also getting a fourth premium reward, which is useful once stuff starts reopening. And getting a personal host also gets you, as stuff reopens, um, actual like real rewards. Would I do it tonight? Would I go and spend that multiplying category, the multiplier on that category like this second? So I could have these benefits. No, I'd wait for stuff to start reopening, make sure COVID stuff ends. Um, but not a lot of people have, you know, extra money just laying around, especially in COVID times. So if I was planning a, a trip and I want to stay at like Bellagio or Aria or Verdara or um, pretty much anywhere, MGM Signature, MGM Grand, you know. Say I wanted to stay and I wanted to really maximize the vacation and use that personal host. Yeah. Are, are my Vegas hosts as good as like a regular casino host? No. But it takes a lot more to get a regular casino host than a my Vegas host. I mean, if, if you think about it, it's $800 to get a my Vegas host, essentially. Um, you get a regular host in a casino, depending on where you're gambling, for a lot more than that. It's, um, the comp system is like a very small percentage of what you're gambling, especially if you're playing slots. It's basically what your average bet is per hour times the payback percentage of the slot machine or video poker. So you could be playing for hours at like $10 per hour or whatever, um, Normally, that's not how it works with slots. It's normally like closer to like 50 or $60 that they're getting an hour from you. Um, and you probably have to play to get more than a buffet, you know, for like 20 hours to start getting like legit. Um, so if you're playing 20 hours times, say like 50, what is that? That's like a couple thousand dollars, 10 grand or something. I don't know. Let me see. Um, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the calculations. Um, we'll say we'll say fifty times fifteen. That's seven hundred fifty. So the other one would have been a thousand. So like, would like it like would you rather at a lower level casino like Luxor, which actually is probably gonna go out. I would assume Excalibur probably will too. Um, they'd probably build like a big, big old thing on that side of the strip um would you rather spend 750 in the casino on slots over you know x amount of hours or would you rather spend it in my vegas and get a personal slot it's kind of what your preferences are um of course you wouldn't be getting the seven or, or like the five or six percent back on the the money you use through amazon or whatever they're rotating categories, so sometimes you have grocery stores. You can always buy them at grocery stores. Sometimes it's convenience stores. Most of them sell gift cards, and it just rings up as that. So that's part of the strategy I'll introduce in the future. Um, it's it's kind of a look into it. I know a lot of people um, are on the fence about that. They're like, I'm not advocating you go and put $1,000 on a credit card, leave it sitting there. Um, let it accrue interest because then that 6% doesn't make any difference. What I'm saying is if you have, like, say, $100 that you could spend and, and you buy the gift card through Amazon, you get 6% back on that. You, you pay that $100 off of your credit card and you don't pay any interest and you get that 6% or 5% or whatever the hell it is. Um, that that's like you have to be responsible with your finances as well. I'm not just saying, hey, put fifty grand on a credit card, and you get a free vacation. Uh, well, no, because you're paying like thirty percent interest on a on ten grand. It's not really free, um, but it it does make it worth it in the long run. 
um, if you really maximize it. That's like the, it's like a really deep dive, and that will be like way down the road. So thank you for, for watching this. I know it. I wasn't playing the games, um, but this is really a, a deeper concept to my Vegas. I right now would not buy chips. I would buy the gift cards right now if you have a Chase Freedom where you get to use Amazon because those gift cards don't expire. Um, and then I would just basically convert that over. So you have, you know, especially if you have a sign-up bonus because I know Chase Freedom right now has a sign-up bonus of of something, you really would really maximize it out. So say you have to spend uh, $500 and you get 150 back or whatever it is, $80 back. I don't, I don't remember what the current bonus is. And then on top of that, you get 5% back and you hit that, that limit for spending a thousand dollars. Um, like that's how you really maximize it. Then if you get the cash back, like it just sits in your account and you could also transfer it out. Um, so there, there is a lot that you can do and I'll really break it down in videos in the future. So thank you once again for watching. I know this, this content may be dry for some people. They're like, what does this have to do with my Vegas? But should you buy chips right now? No. If you can afford through a credit card to with multipliers where you can buy the gift cards now, absolutely. I would I suggest that. Um, outside of that, I'm, I wouldn't be high on buying chips really right now because not a lot of stuff's opening and we don't know when stuff's, if stuff's going to start closing, opening, whatever's going to go on due to COVID. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice uh, weekend and uh, have some, you know, get some jackpots from me. Can't wait to bring you guys new content from Vegas. So thank you and have a nice day.